What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Dick Profile here on TCG University for the card game Universes. My name's Tam, and today I'm going to be showing you my Elena Deck Profile that I played in the Ultra Rare Build Around um, Universes Campus Championship. So, without further ado, let's jump into the profile. All right, you guys, here is my Elena Deck Profile that I did for the Campus Championship this upcoming week. If you want more information, make sure you check out our Patreon, where we have a voting system for uh, every... Uh, campus championship moving forward um, this past week was an ultra rare build around the ultra rare that I chose to build my deck around was Coenma's task and we will get to it here in just one second so um, if you haven't seen one of my deck profiles basically the way that the way that they work is as opposed to just reading off the card verbatim and wasting all your time I want to take and um, give you more of an idea of how the deck wants to operate and so what does my Elena deck want to do my Elena deck wants to get very fast wants to hit very hard and it wants to uh, draw and play Coenma's Task, specifically the form on Coenma's Task. I saw Coenma's Task before I saw Elena, and basically I was like, hey, I, uh, what characters can I make this work with? We can either do Lord Raptor, or I saw the good symbol on here, and went, hmm, I could, uh, make, uh, I could on every single enhance remove the top card of my deck, because that's the hardest part of Coenma's Task, is getting it removed. Again, the discard pile is easy. We play cards in uh, all the time. Drawing it's really easy. We draw f up to five cards every, every turn. But getting it removed is the hard part. And so Elena gets to remove it on every single uh, ability. And so um, hitting fast, hitting hard, and then swarming my hand with a bunch of really cool stuff. Yes, we are playing in a tournament where I do know everybody's uh, awesome ultra rare. It's not super relevant for the remove my opponent's card, but uh, it was just good enough to uh, to uh, uh, make the effect relevant. So um, with that, let's go ahead and jump in to the profile itself. So... First off, I want to talk about four Coemma's Task and the point of this inside of this deck. So the point of this uh, Coemma's Task inside of this deck is we, we're playing a couple of cards that if I saw four of them in my hand, I pretty much just auto win the game. And so um, at the start of the turn, Elena gets to build a card face down. Um, hopefully one of them is a Coemma's Task because I have ways to pick it up, um, as well as we're making checks to put Coemma's Task in the discard pile. And either I remove a the Quimma's task from them playing an action like revoke or bang or something or I take and with Elena remove it for a uh, plus two speed and so the big thing I want you to remember is every single card in my deck if it has a block modifier it also says remove it for plus speed equal to the block modifier which is where her stuff gets so crazy fast so sometimes she'll get plus three speed plus two damage for absolutely no reason which those stats on every single attack is very very strong and so Quimma's Task is the main uh, ultra of the deck everything else is either a uh, common uncommon rare promo or starter deck so with that I'm actually going to leave uh, Quimma's Task out because I'm going to be talking about it a bunch um, so uh, the first attack that I want to talk about is for deflection swing at the start of the turn uh, Elena gets to build in a, uh, a foundation off the top of her deck. Deflection Swing just makes uh, sure that I get to use those uh, foundations. Uh, it says add the top card in and then pick another one up. I never get to reversal with this card. It's way, way, way better on my turn. It gets uh, a bunch of speed. It only gets one damage, but its main job is just to f consistency of finding whatever uh, thing that I need. Probably Coemma's Task or some other uh, attack in my deck. Up next, we're playing uh, the consistency card of Shin Ryukan. This is one of the easiest ways to make sure that my Kuma's task gets to go off. Um, Shin Ryukan's combo ability says take any card from my discard pile and put it on top of my deck. Oh, hey, I'll put this uh, Kuma's task on top of my deck. I'll Elena and remove it for plus two speed. Hey, Kuma's task is now online. As well as it, it gets plus two damage from Elena, and so you can give it speed with itself, give it more speed with Elena, depending on what we discard, probably the two. And so it's a... a uh, nine high for uh, five. Um, they're not blocking that. And so we'll grab a momentum and then pop off. Up next, we're playing the first card that I would consider... Uh getting four copies of we're playing four spear ryu this card um is a sleeper hit in this deck it's combo ability says combo your combo attacks get plus one damage and plus one speed and stun one for the rest of this turn and so what we want to do is is i want to have my attack i want to play uh my Koenma's task and grab all four of these and now from here spear ryu all by itself is going to be a six mid for four with stun one but inside of elena it's actually a six plus whatever we have block modifiers all the way up to four so that could be a 10 mid for uh three four five six with elena not to mention playing all the other ones giving all of them plus four plus four stun four on top of elena stats these four cards kill you it kills every single person in the entire game eventually you'll just die and with how fast elena gets to build we can possibly play all four by turn two <clears throat> 
The other card that we are down to see all four of is Matricide. Now, we are playing under the good symbol. We are playing a bunch of uh, really awesome weapon cards, but we're not really playing anything that wants to flip my opponent's foundations. And so Matricide does not get a ton of ability off of that re combo response. But what's important here is Spear Ryu, uh, its combo uh, ability gets applied to any combo attack, which this card is, and uh, gets to pop off for the rest of the turn. So it's possible that I have maybe two Spear re uh, Ryu's in play. I'll play the Matricide, and even if I don't combo response, maybe they don't have anything flipped. Well, it's still an 8 high for 8 with stun 1, stun 1. Elena's going to give it an additional 1 damage, and the Matricide's going to get an additional speed off of based off of Elena. Having just an 8 high for, for 9 is just good enough, especially if I get to pick up 4 of them, you know? And then, in addition to that, it's also got a 1 mid block with Breaker 1. Um, very, very relevant, very strong card. I'm very happy that it's a promo and not an ultra rare. <clears throat> We're playing four Takeda's Kunai. Um, honestly, it's just a really good low block, and it uh, kind of pops off for what my deck wants to do. It does have EX2, which is the only uh, real momentum outlet inside of the deck, and this card is a very good finisher. Um, being able to pick up four of these and, and toss Kunai, 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 it gives it uh, plus two damage and stun two. So stun two on everything. Elena's giving two extra damage. Um, Elena's giving uh, a little bit extra speed, and then EX whenever it matters. My last uh, cards are just kind of uh, out there cards. We're playing Double Sword, Get Longer. This is just a, a tempo card. I just want to I want to burst as quick as I can. And this says just build three cards off the top of my deck. It's super possible going second to play this card on turn one. It seems really, really easy. Uh, Elena gets to build down a free card, and then you play Sword, Get Longer, and you check your five. You commit a face down. You give it speed. You give it damage with Elena, and then build three more. Hey, I... I by playing an attack, an attack that you're probably not going to block, I've built in a bunch of foundations. And so, um, very, very relevant when it comes to uh, early game plays. Late game plays, it's all right. It's fine. Um, it's only really good if I have a, a, a ways to pick up those face downs again. And then my last attack is Double bam, uh, Bamboo Blind Slice. It's just a little defense. This is the other momentum out that I have inside of my deck. Um, I don't ever want to pick this up, which is why it's just a two of. Uh, it's a solid uh, high block, and uh, it's just a... As I said, a little defense. Sometimes Olena's big issue is she just gets bopped really hard. And so this card is just uh, you know, trying to protect my life, ruin your attack strength so I can kill you on my turn. On to the actions. We already talked about uh, Kawima's task, which is the, the main uh, uh, choice of the deck. But <clears throat> the other choice that we have is double stop. Remember, these get removed for all their block modifiers. So the worse block modifier we have, the better. I want to find a lot of value out of the the bad block modifier cards. Um, being able to commit my opponent's character, if Elena got committed, my, my kill turn's pretty much over, and so doing the same to my opponent uh, is very, very relevant inside of uh, inside of this symbol. On the asset, we're playing um, three United Kingdom of Smash. We are playing three of it because it is unbelievably solid inside of this deck. Elena's build every turn is, is super, super good, but those foundations sometimes are attacks. And so just being able to once per turn lift a foundation up to your hand. Um, oh no, I accidentally built a mattress side that's got a one mid block with breaker one. Well, I'll give uh, I'll pay two vitality, draw a card, and then enhance, give your uh, this attack plus two damage, and then full block it and breaker to you. Ah, perfect. Seems seems good. Um, onto the foundations. It, once again, if you haven't seen one of my deck profiles, basically I lay these guys out into more of their job as opposed to just reading off the cards verbatim. And so the first uh, set of jobs I want to talk about is just consistency. As a five-hander, I sometimes have problems seeing the cards that I need. And so we're playing for I have a sword. Um, Elena gets to build an additional card. And this says I can take any of those face downs and put it back up in my hand after one of my attacks deals damage. Is it a commit cost? So normally you want to take and add one of your committed foundations up to your hand. Otherwise, you're going to be losing two resources, a ready one and then committing one. Um, so you might... Uh, preemptively have to end your turn but um committing your face downs with the face downs that you want first and then probably like a coimus test and then picking up with i have a sword whenever you uh you need it super super relevant <clears throat> Up next, we're playing Double Passing the Torch. It's just a little extra draw power. It's got a solid three mid block for our Elena speed uh, ability. It just says commit draw a card. Very rarely will I ever not have cards in my hand for the other draw ability to be relevant. Uh this card's fine, not necessary, but it's fine. <clears throat> I'm playing triple uh, New Empress of Nether Realm. Once again, I gotta draw cards to make sure that I can kill you and survive. Um, it's got another three high block, and then the Desperation Hands probably is never gonna be played because I'm just gonna. I I'd rather just kill them than uh, just do math. You know, all my stuff gets fast. Who, who cares about the block math? And then my last consistency card is Never a Day Without Training. This card says, um, flip, draw a card if I've got an asset. Hopefully I do with the uh, United Kingdom of Smash. Or discard a card, draw a card, which I'll discard a random bad foundation in order to draw another attack. 
seems relevant. Uh, these cards also combo exceptionally well with Shin Ryukan of being able to stack an attack on top of my deck or Koema's Task or whatever and then play any of these draw cards and then picking it, picking it back up. Up next, uh, we're playing uh, the build cards, uh, Double Buddhist Devotion. <clears throat> I think this card is such a sleeper in pretty much every good deck possible. First form, destroy. Uh, each player can take up to two cards from their hand, or if two foundations and put them into their staging area. There's plenty of times where, um, oh man, if only I had built this one other foundation, I'd auto-win this turn. Well, this says that that happens. I get to speed up by one turn, or I get to take and toss two of their blocks into their hand. Be careful when facing uh, facing uh, cards with um, um, excuse me. Be careful with this card facing uh, seven handers because a lot of times uh, if they have the ability to not have to pass checks to build their cards, they'll just wait for your Buddhist devotions. Um, but this card says that I get to be even more aggressive, especially with Elena's uh, build the face down for free. That is a static, and this is a first form, so very very relevant. In addition to that, we are playing three searching for the Knight of Mare. After I play a combo ability, just to build a top card in. Is this a Elena inside the middle of the turn, but only if I've met a condition of playing a combo ability. And so, giving on myself plus 1 plus 1 stun one and then build an extra card or build two extra cards um just lets just means that if I do Quimus task, this card just lets me go in super hard on that turn. <clears throat> Building more cards, we've got a th uh, two, excuse me, a uh, folktale storyteller. Honestly, this card's just being held in here for if a breaker happens. I want to be able to uh, absorb the breaker on the folktale and then build it down into my staging area and uh, continue on playing my cards. Besides that, um, it's just a, a pretty solid low block on my opponent's turn, being able to block and then clear the card pool, build one. Um, playing it on my turn is not super relevant unless I think I'm going to kill them. On to the aggressive foundations. We're playing four Voices in the Dark, and uh, I know out, at home you're giving me these crazy looks, but the thing about Voices in the Dark being aggressive is it's a four high. Um, <laughs> this card being a four, or excuse me, a four low block is Banana Sandwich. It is the, it, it makes you feel so amazing to uh, remove one of these off of Elena's Enhance and give whatever you want plus four speed. Like imagine not responding to Matricide and making it a base 10 speed attack so insane um they're just whatever this pops whatever this uh randomly gets rolled off of with elena just uh they don't get the block they're just not allowed to we're playing double one with nature this is the main card i was talking about when it comes to a uh, buddhist devotion of just hey if only i had one with nature in play i, I would just win this turn well now i just uh this is a kill you card um discard uh make my stuff even faster give it even more damage this is the stats on the card um really good if your deck is finding it's it's missing killing your opponent try tossing in one with nature's inside of your deck and, and be surprised um how much how relevant that is on the defense we're playing double bakery poster girl uh as i said we do have a one mid block with breaker or two in here, so making sure we get to use it is, is very important. So Bakery Poster Girl just says that I get to nuke one of your opponents, uh, nuke one of your uh, speedy attacks and make sure I get to auto block it. Playing double overly dramatic to make sure that I can cancel whatever my opponent wants to do, um, as well as if they happen to get the deadlock, pick up whatever attack I want, either Master Side or Spear Ryu, in order to just finish off the game. We're playing triple Keiko's aid. Uh, like I said, uh, Elena does her best on her own turn, and I want to be able to play things on my turn. And the way that I get to my turn is that I see that my opponent can't play cards on their turn. And so saying that they can't play any more attacks, I don't care how many foundations you build. I'm going to kill you by stunning them all out with the, the uh, spear reuse. And so saying, hey, you can't play any more attacks this turn is, uh, is very, very good on just a basic simple flip cost, which means that on some of my cards I can... Uh, use them, commit them, pick them back up, either block them again or play them back out for just a little more defense. Next, we're playing Double Friends and Rivals. Uh, this is just to be played on the reversal to try and end their turn. Um, one of the best combos we can do is uh, Keiko's aid into Friends and Rivals, commit two of their cards, say they can't play any more attacks, um, and then just pop off that way and stacking with the Koima's task and, and like setting up for my next turn. It's just a really value play on my opponent's turn. <clears throat> up next we've got uh triple wishing ward just making sure i keep them off of momentum as much as i can um discarding off the top of uh, discarding the top three is not very relevant inside of the, this uh deck but if i do have any uh if my opponent is trying to discard cards out of my hand um it is also a little bit of a of a buffer there just to draw that card back 
Uh, double Sense of Morals. Uh, it's just a staple inside of the symbol. I want to. Uh, it's one of the only cards without a block. Um, I want to make sure that if I get stunned out, I can ready some cards back up. Um, I'm not playing a bunch of other staples inside of this deck just because they don't have block modifiers. But I felt like this one was important enough to make sure that I I had it. As well as um, sometimes I got to find Coolness Task in my inside my discard pile. There's, sometimes it doesn't happen, and I just gotta mill through my deck a little quicker. You know. And then the last card, um, super hyper important when it comes to being a 5 fan-sized character, is for Pursuing a Vendetta. Uh, <clears throat> one of the easiest ways to defeat a uh, low hand-sized character is to deny them of their resources. And Pursuing a Vendetta is the way to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, you, you'll flip your Pursuing a Vendetta and then add in another, another Pursuing Vendetta. This one can't leave um, after one of your other things leave. And so you'll just you'll constantly make their uh, foundation denial stuff not matter, and then eventually, because you've built so many foundations, you'll just kill them. All right, and so that was my Elena deck profile that I played for this uh, week's ultra-rare build-around campus championship with Coenda's task in mind. If you like that, make sure you check out all the matches that uh, Elena played in over on the YouTube channel at the playlist, Ultra Rare Build Around. <clears throat> Join us out on twitch.tv slash TCG University every Tuesday at 6 o'clock where we are playing these matches live. Join us in the chat. Hang out. It's a party. And then lastly, join us on patreon.com slash TCG University to get access to all of these deck lists an entire week early as well as... Um, access to our discord where we get to hang out and chit chat if you want to talk about my elena deck your elena deck any elena deck um i would absolutely love to so um from all of us here at tcg university thank you very much for watching and stay learned.